Hi guys, what's up? It's Ashling. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be testing out a beauty sponge. I don't think I've done a video testing out like a beauty sponge or brush or anything in a hot minute. So I said I would do it today because I used to do these videos all the time back in the day. I used to love testing out like beauty sponges, brushes, things like that. And yeah, I'm bringing it back, bringing it back. The product we have in question today is the Real Techniques Miracle Powder Sponge. This is a microfiber sponge. I'm presuming it's a take on all those microfiber sponges that are going viral these days online. I have to let Chewie in, he's after breaking in. He's in here now. I think you're happy, aren't you? <laughs> Sometimes we fucking hear him snoring in my background or making noises and they're like, is that your stomach? Is that you? What the hell's happening? But yeah, no, it's mostly chewy. He's always in here when I film. If you are interested in this type of content, then don't forget to subscribe down below and definitely thumbs up this video if you like me testing out beauty tools because I can do different types of things, especially if you see something interesting online, like send it my way and I will review it for you guys. I am going to be testing out the Miracle Powder Sponge today. It's microfiber technology, so like I said, it's probably similar to a lot of the microfiber products that are on the market. I've never tried them before because I just like a good old run the mill beauty blender and I've kind of like stuck with that for years and happy out with it. So this is what we're dealing with. It is a revolutionary foam technology paired with proprietary velvet tea material for evenly blended powder, seamlessly set powder, foundation for a matte base, rounded side for blending, flat edge for baking, pointed tip for covering, use wet or dry with powders. So it is kind of saying powders a lot to me and it says it on the front as well. That's a miracle powder sponge. I'm gonna test it with liquid and powder because I can't really get like a good gauge on a product if I can't use it in multiple different ways. I understand it's marketed towards powders, but I wanna see can it do anything with liquid foundations, and I wanna see how it is at actually setting my powders. And obviously I'm gonna test it out myself on powder foundations and see how I get on, but I am really interested in seeing how it works out with my foundation. And let's kick off the video. I have my hair straight for the first time ever, and I hate it hate my hair straight. I just feel like it's real lank when it's straight. So I think I'm gonna be curling that bad boy later. This is what the sponge looks like. It comes in the packaging, signature packaging that Real Techniques has. It's just like plastic packaging. Uh, personally, I don't really like this type of packaging. So this product did come out in 2019. So I'm probably like at least six months too late for this, but who cares? And the sponge is very unusual. It's kind of like furry. I have another Real Techniques sponge here somewhere. Somewhere. So my other Real Technique sponge is a little bit more bouncier. Obviously this one's wet, this is dry. This is a lot firmer than the original. And obviously it has like the little microfibers on it, which the original doesn't. It's just like a basic run the mill sponge. I quite enjoy the original Real Technique sponge. I have done for years. I have a whole review of it on my channel. It's probably like donkey's years old, but still I have the same opinion on it. I like the look of the sponge, the feel of it, however. Ah. Uh, I don't like the feel of it. <laughs> I get like an adverse feeling towards cotton wool and the kind of like break it apart. I can't deal with it. And I kind of feel like when I rub this around, oh my God, it's making me nauseous. I don't like the feel of the sponge, but that's just me because I'm kind of weird like that. So now I have wet the sponge. It is similar in size. I'd say, yeah, I'd say they're to a T nearly the same size as the original. It still has that feeling, but it's not as bad. I can kind of touch it now that it's wet, but I'm just not crazy about the feeling, but that's just me. This one is a lot spongier. It's a little bit denser than the original. Similar, the shape, the size, it's just the density of them. This is obviously a lot more dense. So we're gonna go and use this on my face. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my normal technique, which is apply my product on with a brush, and then I'm gonna blend it out with this. And then on this side, I'm just gonna use the sponge. I'll know myself which one I prefer and how I would prefer to use this. First off, I'm gonna prime up my Catrice Tensational. You probably think this is a lot of primer. I know, it probably is. But this primer just makes my skin just do all sorts of crazy stuff, like look glowy and amazing. I love it. Taking my Inglot HD foundation, applied a couple of pumps of that to the back of my hand. I'm just gonna use my flat foundation brush just to apply it on one side and then blend out the product with the beauty sponge. Wow, my lips are seriously dry. Right, so we're gonna take the sponge on this side and see how we get on. Okay, this sponge is super firm. It's definitely a lot firmer than the original Real Techniques. It's still blending everything in. Kind of feel like I'm bouncing a rock off my face. 
not to be dramatic about it. The microfibers are definitely more intact now. It's not dry or anything like that, but I can kind of still feel it. I could see why you would use this on powders because the actual product itself is, it's not moist. So normally the sponge, like the original Real Techniques, it kind of has a bit of moisture in the actual sponge that if I really, really squeezed hard, my hand would be moist. Whereas if I really squeeze hard with this, my hand is not as moist. Does that make sense? So there's not as much, it's not holding as much water in this. I don't mean the sponge is actually really hard. I just mean that it's harder than the original Real Techniques or the Beauty Blender or the EX1 sponge that I love. It's kind of done its job. It looks nice, like my foundation. It's blended it in. I wouldn't expect anything less because the brush kind of did most of the work. It spread the products. I'm gonna try it with the foundation itself just to see how it applies. And I'm definitely more of a bouncer than a swiper when it comes to using sponges. I would definitely say because this sponge is a lot drier than the original Real Techniques, it doesn't eat as much of my foundation and I find that with most sponges. That's why I go in with a brush first because I just do find that sponges are great to give a finish to the skin, like they airbrush the face, but I do find that they can tend to eat a lot of the product. So I'm actually... Like, I'm not really disappointed at all. I feel like this has applied my foundation really nicely. And it looks really well. And it looks smooth. And it looks similar to the brush side. I must say that that has spread my foundation on so nicely. And it's given my skin quite an airbrushed effect. It hasn't eaten up my foundation. Like, I really like that, actually. Do I refer to the original Real Techniques? I don't know, but I just feel like this sponge is much better at applying product and blending it out. And it doesn't eat my foundation, which is always a concern with any sponge that I use. And this one's spreading it so nicely. And I think, like, the little microfibers are just, like, buffing it onto my skin. I really like this. Not crazy about the feel of the sponge, but I actually really like the way that this is applying my foundation and the way it blended out my foundation on both sides. I prefer it, I think, to just apply the foundation on its own rather than using the brush and then blending it in. I actually think I prefer to just pick up the product itself and blend it onto the skin. And I just really feel like it's giving quite an airbrushed look to my foundation. I was quite fearful because I thought um, as it was marketed towards powders, that it wouldn't be able to blend liquids out on my skin, but it's done a really, really great job. Like, I am so impressed. So that is the sponge side, just using the sponge, and that is the brush side, and then using the sponge to blend it out. So I'm not really noticing any difference. I do feel like there's a little bit more foundation on this side, because I obviously was using the sponge, and I felt like it picked up more foundation, it didn't eat up as much foundation, and I felt like after I spread the foundation evenly over my skin with the brush and then blended it in that I lost a little bit of the coverage. But this one gave me just a little bit more coverage than this side. But what do you guys think of the finish? So I'm just going to set this little bad boy down and I'm going to go finish the eyes and then I'm going to come back to you guys and finish my concealer and do maybe a bit of cream contouring and see how it works out with those products and then my powders. So I'll be back to you guys in a mere moment. So I'm gonna apply some concealer and I'm gonna take my favorite concealer at the moment. This is the Conceal and Define Infinite Concealer. So we're gonna see how this sponge blends it out. I'm just gonna apply that underneath my eye, underneath both of my eyes. And I think just down there. And so yeah, kind of where I would normally apply my concealer. I'm just gonna blend it out. Feels so weird because the sponge is kind of dry. Like not that it's dry, but it's it doesn't have as much moisture as a normal sponge. It's not picking up as much product, I find. I'm gonna blend it everything out really easily. I'm going to cream contour next. So I said I would do this up close so you guys can see. I'm gonna go in with my NYX cream contour palette and I'm going to take this shade here which is toffee and I'm just going to take that on a brush first and then just blend it out. Just tap a little bit on here and here and just go around my forehead and then just a little bit under my lip and I'm just going to take the sponge and I'm going to blend all that out 
So again, it is blending it with ease. However, I would say that using a dry sponge on a cream product is a little bit more time consuming to move it, I think. But it's still blending it out really nicely. I think that's all blended in. I wouldn't add any more cream contour because I don't want anything too severe. I'm gonna use this to set and see how we get on. So I'm gonna move on to my Revolution Lace Powder. This is my baking powder. I'm just gonna apply this underneath my eye and this is probably where this bad boy comes in best because it is supposed to be used with powder products. So I'm just gonna pick up some of that powder and just apply it underneath my eye. Ooh. Now that applies a lot of powder. I'm just gonna use that to bake. This is probably one of the best sponges I've used to actually pick up this powder. So I'm gonna leave that there for a few seconds just to bake. So whilst I'm doing that, I'm gonna take some of my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I'm going to use that to set my face. I'm just gonna kind of smush it into the back of my hand. I'm gonna use that to set my face. I think that's working really well to set my face. My face feels really soft. I'd actually use that sponge, which I never have used a sponge before, to set my face. I would actually use it on an ongoing basis to do that because I quite like the way it has just kind of like set everything. Oh, I'm gonna have to get powder in my hair. And my face feels really, really, really set. I feel like that pushed it into my skin really well, but it didn't add any like cakiness or anything like that. It just set the face. I'm gonna see, can I blend this powder out with it? I would usually use, uh, mm, hang on, how will I? I'll just use the tip. I usually use a brush to wipe that off. So I'm just gonna use this on one eye and then the brush on another. I don't notice any difference really, to be fair. Like from the brush or using the sponge. I think I think it looks great on both sides. You guys kind of get my gist on how I was feeling about it as I was applying products. I actually think it's a really good sponge. I think it only retails for about $7.99 here in Ireland. I will try and get like links and everything and leave them in the description because I, I can't think offhand of how much it is. But I know it's super affordable. I think it did a really good job. And the initial like feel of this was kind of what was putting me off it. But I feel like it applied the products really well. It applied the powder particularly well. Obviously it's more tailored to powder products. I need to try it with a powder foundation but as liquids go it blended everything out. It did struggle a little bit with creams and I just think it's because it doesn't hold as much moisture or the sponge itself is not as moist as the original Real Techniques or Beauty Blender or my EX1 sponge because they do tend to get a little bit more moist and I feel like that's easier to move a cream product. But all in all, I really like this sponge. I really liked how it applied the powders. I really liked how easy it applied my baking powder and how it swiped it away and everything. I just really, really enjoy it and I will definitely keep using it. I do feel like it is more gimmicky, obviously, because it has that like furry feel to it, but it does everything that an original Real Technique sponge does it just is a little bit better at applying powders because I would say that any like moisture sponge it doesn't apply the powders as well as I would like them to it kind of applies them moistly onto the skin does that make any sense but you know the way like the powder starts to cake that's exactly what I'm trying to say it's like water and like powder mixing and kind of cake and this does not do that because the sponge itself is drier I would a million percent use the sponge and I probably will use it ongoing because I just think that my foundation looks flawless I feel like my under eye areas look flawless I feel like it blended everything out onto my skin really well and I really enjoyed it so guys that's my two cents on that product I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, thumbs it up. Do let me know if there's any other tools out there that you want me to try out or anything kind of a little bit more unusual or maybe something kind of gimmicky. Should I test that out? Send it my way. I will always give you guys my honest opinion and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye guys.